Caligula, the Mad Emperor, the personification of evil. A man who tortured daughters and sons to death while making their parents watch, forcing those parents to smile and applaud the mutilation of their own child. What if I told you that this man has a backstory that will actually make you sympathize with him? If I told you that by the end of this video you will know more about the monster Caligula became, but will also feel sorry for the boy Caligula once was and see that he was less of a calculated evil but rather a child whose innocence was taken and who never learned to differentiate pain from pleasure because no one is born a monster <laughs> damn <laughs> that's, that's, i think that's the first time i did an intro without a joke hey look at us look at us huh who would have thought not me but hey it turns out there's little room for comedy in a story as dark and tragic as this one i still found room for comedy anyways let's get uh ready for a bit of a twisted tale let's do this By the time Caligula was seven years old, his father had been killed. Later, that was followed by his brother being forced to commit suicide. Then his mother was starved to death and then his other brother was starved to death as well. Don't feel bad though because Caligula still had three sisters that he had sex with. <laughs> what the Allegedly, uh, allegedly, okay? And allegedly is all I can give you on this one and you see that this entire video is under a veil of allegedly and rumors and confusion which is important to note because especially when it comes to Caligula we love to just run with these allegations because a guy that is guilty of one sin must be guilty of all of them but it's not that simple so let's start in the beginning August 31st 12 AD Caligula was born as the son of the Roman equivalent of Captain America, Germanicus. This Captain Rome had it all. He was a brave military leader, he was noble, he was honorable, he was charming, and he was a handsome man with some serious cake. That is America's ass. I could not possibly overstate how popular Germanicus was because the Romans literally thought of him as the second coming of Alexander the Great and if emperors were elected by the public, <laughs> forget about it, Germanicus would win every time. Easy. Germanicus was the Don Dada around Rome and so of course to his son, Dada was the role model and you best believe that Captain Rome was also an amazing dad man, he took his son everywhere. A bit problematic since Germanicus was mostly on the frontiers and that meant he literally took his son into war with him, but hey, it's a thought that counts. This father really wanted to be around his son, so Caligula basically grew up in war camps and he really wanted to stunt like his daddy, so he was constantly running around in soldier uniforms that were way too big for him and since that was like the cutest thing ever, it earned him the cutest little nickname, Little Boot, which in Latin simply is Caligula. But little did little little boot know that he was born into some serious Game of Thrones type drama. His father, Don Dario Germanicus, was adopted by his uncle after his own father died and that uncle was Tiberius and two years after Caligula was born, in 14 AD, the first Roman Emperor Augustus had died and his successor was Uncle Tiberius. And Tiberius' desire to inherit the title of emperor and rule Rome can basically be summed up like this. I don't want it. I never asked for it. I don't want it. I don't. I never wanted it. Sorry, Tiberius, how do you feel about becoming emperor of Rome again? I told you I don't want it. Okay, got it. What Tiberius really wanted to do was to serve in the military, protect Rome's borders, because that's what he was good at. He was a quiet boring, disciplined man who made a great general and administrator but being emperor of Rome, Tiberius had the discipline and the brains for it but not the passion, not the heart, not the panache. Can be. So after a few years of ruling Rome like the good administrator he was capable of being, Tiberius then became overwhelmed by the world of politics and soon 
The power of the position corrupted his heart and soul. It was power Tiberius never wanted in the first place, but forced into its grasp, it got to Tiberius' head. His mind became paranoid and the man saw death around every corner, traitors everywhere, and never having learned the intricacies of politics, he took a soldier's approach to dealing with these fears. Bloodshed. That was the solution. Tiberius instated treason laws all over Rome, which really was just the purge. Emperor edition. Man, I don't know if you watch all of my videos, but Rome really seemed to have a lot of purges going on. And that kind of makes me think, just off, just off, the, off topic, a purge ancient Rome movie? <laughs> I mean, don't they have like six purges anyway? I feel like at this point it's just a franchise that they slap any theme on anyway, like Assassin's Creed. An Assassin's Creed Rome. <laughs> Yo, we need. All right, I'm getting, I'm getting sidetracked. The treason laws allowed Tiberius to kill anyone his paranoia dreamt up to be a traitor. And his paranoia was a bigger dreamer than Martin Luther King, so that meant traitors everywhere. And soon Tiberius abused his power to have Romans live in a state of constant fear all over Rome. Anybody could be accused of treason, and of course an accusation by the emperor equaled certain death. So after a solid start to the first part of his reign, Tiberius quickly turned into a paranoid tyrant. But the thing with paranoia is, it's imagined, so no amount of solutions will ever solve it. The blood shed in those executions did nothing to quiet Tiberius' mind, but it did everything to taint the shiny Roman capital that Augustus had left him, and to make things even worse for Rome and its people. Five years into Tiberius' reign, in 19 AD, the beloved Germanicus was poisoned. The one, the one silver lining of Tiberius' rule, because as Tiberius' adopted son, Germanicus was his natural heir. It was the only reason Rome was able to endure Tiberius. And now you take Captain Rome away from them? And to kill such a man with poison? I've heard it said that poison is a woman's weapon. Which coward would do such a thing? Rome wanted heads to roll, and since Tiberius had literally killed imagined traitors all over the city for the last couple of years, it didn't take long for people to point fingers at the mad emperor. Many were convinced that the coward Tiberius killed Germanicus the Great out of fear. But the thing is, while it's easy and understandable why you would point your finger at Tiberius, it is unknown who killed Germanicus. To this day, historians don't know the truth behind Germanicus' death. They don't have the answers. But you ain't got the answers, Sway! What we do know is that the death of Germanicus sent Tiberius' paranoia and its treason laws into overdrive, since now it had a genuine agenda. Find the killer of my nephew, my adopted son, find Germanicus' killer. So Rome's streets were overflowing with blood. And after a man was found guilty and executed for Germanicus' death, Tiberius decided to now abandon the city he never wanted to rule, the city he had ravaged, the city that hated him, and Tiberius chose to live on his faraway villa on Capri, where he spent his days inviting young boys into his home and make them drink lots of wine so that they have to pee, and then he tied up their willies so that they can't pee. Yeah, when I uh, told you that power corrupted and ruined this man, I meant <laughs> it corrupted and ruined this man. These days the only thing that could bring him joy were perversions that I detail in my Tiberius video. But suffice to say, for now, there were lots of young boys and women entering Tiberius' villa on Capri, and the only way they left was being thrown off the villa's cliffs. Yeah. The man also got his rocks off, throwing people off rocks. A bloodthirsty emperor turned bloodthirsty pervert. At least Rome was now rid of him, right? <laughs> nah, man. Tiberius still maintained the title of emperor, and the man he left in charge to rule in his name. And that dude was even worse. Sejanus, a friend from the military, who was emperor in all but name from 26 AD onwards. And Tiberius may have had the streets overflowing with blood, but Sejanus, man, <laughs> that dude took it to Wow. Napa. Napa. Sejanus was not cruel out of some paranoid fear. Nah, 
He was a calculated cruel man who simply made those moves to acquire more power and more and more power because he wasn't happy with ruling in Tiberius' name. He wanted the title of emperor for himself. Problem was, Sianos was not related to Tiberius, or rather not related to the emperor's bloodline in any way. But he was also the kind of man that finds solutions to problems and his solution for this problem was to simply end the bloodline. And that is what connects this long backstory that's very important to Caligula. With Caligula's father, Germanicus the Great dead, the next in line to inherit the throne were Caligula and his two older brothers before him. And with how popular Germanicus was, these sons were sure to have the people's support. This obviously made all of Germanicus' sons a major problem for Sianus' ambition. So using the treason laws that paranoid Tiberius so conveniently established before he left, Sianus could freely kill any and all imagined traitors in the name of his emperor while really only killing to further his own agenda. So he had Germanicus' two eldest sons killed by starving one to death and forcing the other to commit suicide and also made Germanicus' widow take her own life. And somehow, young Caligula survived. And this is where we enter confusion territory once again, because it is not clear why Caligula was not killed. And to make this even more confusing, we're not even certain that it was Sianus who had them killed. Remember how Tiberius was accused of having killed Germanicus? Well, if he did that, if he really did that, why would he not then take care of Germanicus' children too? Maybe he was behind it and after the backlash of Germanicus' death he didn't want to be seen holding the smoking gun and that's why he left Rome? Maybe, maybe, maybe. But it's important that you know that all of this, all of this, it really is a mess that was not clear then and is certainly a lot less clear now, 2000 years later. And to make all this even more confusing, in 31 AD, Tiberius then asked Caligula to live with him on Capri. Why do that? If he really killed young Caligula's family, this is the most twisted psycho move ever. Unless he did it out of guilt, or maybe he really mourned Germanicus and his sons and did it out of pity. Maybe he wanted to keep Caligula safe from Sianus and groom him as the next emperor. Or maybe with all the death Caligula had experienced, he was the perfect man to keep Tiberius's misery company. All of this though, all of this, we don't know. We don't know his story and really knows the truth. Nobody does. And if they tell you, they're lying. You ain't got the answers, man! And that's okay, because it's important for this video that we don't know. I need you to be confused so you understand how confusing it was to the people at the time. You're in that same ancient boat with them right now. No one knew what was really going on. There were no answers. So remember that, because we'll, we'll come back to this. But for now, we'll continue with the one thing we do know. In 31 AD, at 19 years young, Caligula obeyed the emperor and left Rome to move to Capri. From being raised around death in war camps, to seeing death take his entire family, to now moving into a mansion where death is just an aphrodisiac to the old perverted emperor that rules it. Yeah, you could say Caligula was bound to be messed up. By the time Caligula joined Tiberius on Capri, Tiberius hadn't been to Rome in five years. Eventually, he once had it arranged that Sianus was killed for his attempts to seize power and that might give you the impression that he cared about what Sianus did in Rome, but overall, nah man, Tiberius couldn't have cared less about the capital anymore. He only cared about his life on Capri, he only cared about his villa painted with sex scenes. And I'm not saying that figuratively, I'm saying that literally. The walls of his Capri villa were literally painted with sex scenes that were nothing in comparison to Tiberius' own sex life, because that man had a thing or three for violence and perversion, preferably in combination. So he would bring in women and young boys alike to do what he wants with them, and if they resist in a way that didn't get him more excited, he had them thrown off cliffs. And when he wasn't doing that and just lounging in his pool, Tiberius had a group of young boys being groomed as a so-called little fishes, young boys that mastered the art of underwater 
Felicio, uh, Tiberius took perversion, man. He took perversion and he took it. You take me to a hole? <laughs> now, mind you, everything that Tiberius allegedly did was written about by his opposition before and long after his death. So they had every reason to slander him since gossip was a powerful tool back then, especially effective when the emperor is a weird paranoid loner that nobody likes because he killed people for imagined treason and who is away from Rome and not there to defend himself when all this gossip is out on the streets and an emperor that abandoned them and let a madman run the city. So consider this the cancel culture of the time where often there is a tiny bit of truth or reason for assumptions and a lot of BS. But with the amount of assumptions and stories we have on Tiberius, you don't need a lot of truth for Tiberius to be a bit of a massive pervert. And all the surviving texts say he was a pervert. So that's all I have to go on. Okay, welcome in pervert mansion, Caligula. Of course, it wasn't just Tiberius and young Caligula in pervert mansion. They had staff, guards, administrators, you know, holding orgies and then getting rid of the bodies that takes manpower, you know? So there were a lot of people around and they all knew Caligula's tragic tale that he had lost his entire family. So, of course, they made fun of him. Haha, <laughs> your dad got murdered. <laughs> And your mom too, and your brother starved to death, and the other killed themselves. <laughs> you know, classic innocent hazing. What the hell is? That's why I love you. That's why I love dogs. Cause you people, man, they're just. <sighs> So that was one thing Caligula had to endure, and the other was the fact that Caligula really had no idea if. Tiberius killed his family or not. Tiberius would of course claim that he loved Germanicus, Caligula's father, and on paper he had all the proof. <laughs> he literally adopted Germanicus, planned to make him his heir. But for Caligula at the same time, his mother, when she was still alive, she went around telling everybody that Tiberius did kill Germanicus, but Tiberius could argue that he turned the city upside down to find the traitor that killed Germanicus, and then the mom could argue that that proves nothing since he literally killed a lot of traitors that he just made up, and then Tiberius could argue that he had Seanus killed, who killed her whole family, and then she, well she couldn't argue back because she was dead, because Seanus also killed her. Classic, he said, she said, she died, he became a pervert, you know how it goes. And I'm telling you all these confusing, contradicting stories, all these rumors and allegations, because, again, I need you to feel what type of world Caligula grew up in. A world made up entirely of lies, mistrust, deceit, hatred, death, and perversion. Man, Caligula was only 19, and that's literally all he knew. Don't forget, he grew up on in war camps. That's all he knew. And I know I use this scene all the time, but it was never more fitting than here, because this is absolutely true for Caligula. You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it, molded by it. The only thing he hadn't yet experienced for himself was the perversion aspect, but Tiberius, <laughs> Tiberius quickly made sure that that changes. He let Caligula watch and have as many orgies as he wants. And not just orgies, no. Tiberius taught Caligula the intricacies of sadism, that pain is pleasure, that torture is pleasure, and that ultimately death is pleasure. You know, when me or you, when we bust nuts, we might kill off a pack of Kleenex in a good week, but when Caligula busted a nut, you kill of a pack of people, <laughs> you get me. And at 19, you still have that appetite, you know, that thirst, you know, you remember, you remember what it was like, your mom wandering where all these tissues and toilet paper went and why the socks are all crunchy and all that, man, at that age, you have stamina, you have a bigger appetite for nuts than a squirrel, <laughs> you get me. So with the ways of pleasure that Tiberius taught Caligula and the free reign he gave him and the thirst that this young man had, Caligula quickly racked up quite the ball. Body count. And that's the double meaning type of body count because when Caligula took people to the meatpacking district, <laughs> the butcher was busy. <laughs> you get me. 
actually I'm not even sure if I get me. Um, my, my point is that Caligula had sex with a lot of people and he killed a lot of people and often they were the same people. But Caligula was not ashamed of it. <laughs> no, no, please, man. Caligula was like... There's people. The ones I put down, the people I killed. I want you to know that I'd do it all again. This is a circus, all right? It's a charade, it's an act. It's bullshit about how Language. crazy I am. I ain't crazy. I'm not crazy, okay? I know what I did. I know who I am. And I do not need your help. I'm smack dab in the middle of my right goddamn mind and any scumbag, any any low life, any maggot piece of shit that I put down, I did it because I liked Order. it. Hell, I loved it. And of course he would feel that way. Life and Tiberius taught him that the value of a human is nothing and that death and murder have no consequence. Caligula would have felt about killing humans for pleasure the way you and I feel about an animal being killed for the pleasure of eating a steak. And at some point, Caligula excelled at this lifestyle so much that even Tiberius allegedly said, I am nursing a viper for the Roman people. Yeah, Tiberius knew exactly what Caligula was turning into and yet he planned to unleash it onto Rome. He planned for Caligula to be his successor. To be precise, in 35 AD, he named both Caligula and his cousin Gemellus as joint heirs to the throne. And again, was this guilt over murdering Caligula's family or pity or simply a young man he's grown fond of? We don't know what Tiberius motives were, but Caligula, he eventually made up his mind. Seeing what he saw on Capri, he had less and less doubt that his mother's accusations were true that this perverted emperor was the man responsible for the death of his family. So every so often, Caligula would sneak into Tiberius' bedroom while the aging emperor was asleep and he held a dagger over his body. And that was not the only way he was secretly opposing Tiberius. Caligula also formed an alliance with the head of the emperor's private guard because he knew that in this Roman Game of Thrones you win or you die. There is no middle ground. And an aging emperor means every single one of his heirs or possible heirs is likely to die at the hands of an ambitious man or woman. And Caligula had literally experienced this firsthand, mind you. So he wanted to make sure that when Tiberius dies, at least his guard would be on Caligula's side. And then on March 16th, 37 AD, old man Tiberius did die in his sleep at age 77. Since that is an old age for the time, it is very possible that he did die because it was just his time. But it's also very possible that on one of his secret nightly visits, Caligula decided to actually kill the emperor. Once again, we don't know. We don't. But it doesn't make a difference. The outcome is the same. Caligula and his cousins were now co-emperors, but only one of them had been smart enough to secure the loyalty of the emperor's guard. So Caligula immediately had his cousin in prison and then killed. I did warn you not to trust me. So now Rome belonged to Caligula, the third emperor. Mind you, all this was still going down on Capri. So once the news reached the people of Rome, once they heard that Tiberius was dead, they were like, oh, happy day. More than that, they wanted payback. They wanted to tear the dead man's body apart after all the evils Tiberius committed and the free reign he gave Sianus that led to even worse evils. They wanted to ravage the perverted emperor's body like he had ravaged many of their young relatives in his perverse exploits. And then, when the frenzied people heard that the next emperor would be the son of their beloved and unjustly murdered hero Captain Rome Germanicus, not just the son, but the surviving son who was forced to live with the tyrannical pervert that killed his family but against all odds came out on top and was now emperor? Man, what a story. I mean, come on, man. As a Roman citizen who has no idea what Caligula did on Capri, how could you not love and root 
for the guy. So when Caligula returned to Rome as the new emperor, the people were excited, like. I'm not exaggerating, they were mad happy to see him. Finally the emperor is back in Rome where he belongs and not in hiding. Finally after 23 long years the reign of terror was over. They wanted Caligula to usher in another peaceful era like Augustus did before Tiberius. But of course, <laughs> this is still Caligula we're talking about. Of course, they didn't know the guy like, like you and I know the guy. So as soon as Caligula took over, he was actually a great emperor, like stand up guy, tip top, you know, took charge and did a great job. I'm not kidding. Rome loved Caligula. With a backstory like his, man, 24 years old Caligula was immediately sitting pretty on the throne, but he did much more than that. I mean, get this, immediately after taking over, Caligula ended the treason trials and People love when you don't execute them. Caligula lowered taxes and people love when you lower taxes. Caligula gave the army a pay rise and people love money. He held feasts for the people constantly and the people love a good feast. And Caligula threw a lot of gladiator games and the people love watching men try to kill each other for their entertainment even though they hated their previous emperor because he killed people for his entertainment because people love being hypocrites. All around Rome, Caligula was the man. And after over 20 years of suffering under Tiberius, this new young emperor truly felt like the second coming of Rome's glorious first emperor, Augustus. Finally, no more fear. Finally, good times ahead. Surely Rome would once again be safe. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, seriously, right? But then Caligula got sick. And yes, that is another one of those double meaning occasions. Just eight months into his reign, after eight months of doing nothing but good, great things, Caligula fell ill and was close to death for weeks. And rumor had it that he wasn't just ill, rumor had it that he had been poisoned. Now I really need you to think about what happened in Caligula's past. I mean, that's why I went into such detail on it. Recall the world of death, treason, greed that he was born into. Recall all that. Remember all that. Remember that his own father was literally also poisoned. Now Rome celebrates Caligula as their new emperor, meaning it is the first time Caligula is loved since his whole family was murdered. For the first time, finally, there is some happiness in his life again, some hope and maybe a change for the better. And then he's poisoned poisoned by one of the very people that claimed to love him the boy born into darkness finally saw some light and then this happens i didn't see the light until i was already a man by then it was nothing to me but blind. being poisoned like this must have felt like a gut punch except worse because a uh, gut punch doesn't i mean it doesn't goddamn leave you poisoned and so sick that you're on the verge of death for weeks and there's no Netflix at the time, no gaming back then. <laughs> you realize how long weeks of being sick felt back then? It was terrible. And the people of Rome were devastated. Just when they thought things were about to get better, their new emperor is dying, poisoned, just like his great father, like Germanicus. Are you kidding me? People were crying in the streets, and senators were praying to the gods to please save Caligula. And some senators even offered the gods to take them in his place. And it seemed like one of the many gods actually listened, because Caligula recovered. Well, in terms of health, he recovered. But in terms of being sick, sick in the head, man, he was only getting started. Of course, you already know how sick and twisted Caligula can be from what I told you about his time on Capri, but Rome didn't know that. And whoever poisoned Caligula snatched away what little light Rome's love brought into his darkness. And with that light extinguished, it triggered the dark side Caligula. And Rome had no idea what was about to be unleashed upon them. But first, first Caligula had to actually thank the senators that prayed for him. I mean, that was super selfless and just a genuine kindness. They, 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 they offered themselves in his stead. So Caligula told them, 
I heard, I heard you even asked the gods to die in my stead. Like what? That is so kind of you. I can't believe you. I can't believe you did that. Like for me, <laughs> you shouldn't have. And imagine if the gods were real. And they want you to keep your promise for sparing me, right? Like, <laughs> you would actually almost, like, you would have to die. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You have to keep your promise. You have to die now. And then he made the senators commit suicide in front of him. Yeah. <laughs> ah, Caligula's true villain arc starts exactly now. Healthy Caligula re-emerged into public life and just how Batman came out of the dark wearing a weird bat costume, Caligula emerged out of the dark wearing uh, women's clothes. Yeah, and the Romans must have been like... I'm serious, my guy came out cross-dressing like it's 2023 and most would say the near-death experience just turned him crazy and evil, but no. That crazy, that evil, it was always there. It was never calculated evil to begin with. It was the same kind of evil children are when they just don't know what evil or what good even really is. When they literally have no conscience because they just were never taught what it is to have a conscience. So that near-death experience sent Caligula's mind back into that childish state. The state in which Caligula knew humans to be nothing but toys, the viper that Tiberius raised and warned about, it was now fully unleashed upon Rome. And for this part of the story, let me just give you some of Caligula's, let's call them worst hits, so you have an idea of what he did to people. Caligula would often host dinner parties for senators and their wives, and then he took the senators' wives into another room, raped them, sat them back down at the table with their husband, and made everybody act happy, like nothing happened. Caligula also reinstated the treason trials, except he didn't execute for treason, he did it to randomly show his power by just executing people for the sake of it. Except execution with Caligula wasn't him just killing someone. No, Caligula made sure the victims stay alive for as long as possible and he tortured them to death for days. You're not going to die today. You're not going to die for quite a while. And just like Circe, Caligula loved to make parents watch their children being tortured. You will live to watch your daughter rot, to watch that beautiful face collapse to bone and dust, all the while contemplating the choices you've made. But Caligula even one-upped Circe by forcing the parents to smile and applaud while their children were being slowly killed. Or sometimes, it was the other way around. Once, a man offended Caligula, so Caligula had the whole family brought before him. Man, wife, and the two children. He had the whole family gathered to watch as Caligula first killed the man, then the wife, then the oldest child, and as the youngest was crying and begging and scared for her life, someone in the crowd shouted to please exempt this young virgin girl from this horrid punishment. So then Caligula had her raped, so she would be executed not as a young virgin girl, but as a woman. Caligula became a full-blown monster. Any sympathy that one might have had for the boy he once was, was gone, because sadly, the boy was completely swallowed up by the darkness. And as I was writing the script, I couldn't help but keep coming back to comparing Caligula to the tragic fates of child soldiers in a way. You know, they are forced and manipulated into a life where they commit atrocities that are so evil you can't even imagine and you shouldn't try to imagine. But these child soldiers never had any innocence to begin with. It was taken from them. So when they commit evil, to them it's just a dark, twisted game. And I'm aware that a child soldier's fate is much, much worse than Caligula. 
but there's still a comparison here to Caligula, Rome, and the things he was doing it was just a game. And even in his private life, Caligula didn't do normal. His first wife was his sister, who he had publicly declared as a goddess after she died because he was obsessed with her. His second wife, Milonia Cesonia, was by all accounts just as twisted as him, and so was their relationship. One of the ways Caligula would show love to his second wife was to tell her that he could have her killed and tortured at any time, and he would often have her walk around naked in front of his troops or his friends, and it was said that she liked all that. So yeah, uh, whatever floats your boat, bro. Twisted, you get me? But I want you to remember what I said earlier. All these tales and recollections, biographies about Caligula of the time, they were written by people that despised him, that had every reason to slander him and sometimes live long after him. So we will never know the whole truth or extent of his evil, okay? But what we do know for sure is that, is that Caligula wasn't all cruelty and insanity. Caligula still put on frequent gladiator games for the masses. They loved him. He still extended the aqueducts network all over the city for better access to water. And he built new ports for more trade and more food. But then he heard that there once was a prophecy that Caligula had a better chance of crossing a three mile bay with a horse than becoming an emperor. So when he was emperor, Caligula took the ships needed to operate these new ports and had them made into a floating bridge that spans across the water of Sad Bay for three miles so that he could ride his horse across it, just to prove a point. And without the boats, uh, people kind of starved. Yeah, man, this guy, I'm telling you, unhinged the definition. And you probably heard that Caligula made his horse a consul. Yeah, that, that was just him being disrespectful and telling senators his horse could do a better job than them. Just a joke. I never understood why that horse joke got so blown out of proportion considering all the crazy things he did. And all this insanity, it was expensive. And it didn't help that the guy constantly had statues of him built in every temple because he believed himself to be a god or he wanted people to believe it. So by 39 AD, Rome was broke and was just about done with this guy. The people were not about to do another two decades of suffering like they did with Tiberius. Plus, Caligula was young. He was really young. There's no telling when this reign would end. Ah, man. Mm -mm. This time, they were going to get rid of the tyrant early. This time, real treason was brewing. And despite holding quote-unquote treason trials all the time, purging the city, Caligula was really just killing people for fun. I killed the son! He was blind to actual treason. He was oblivious to the fact that Rome was turning on him, that powerful people were getting together behind his back, and Caligula just continued to put on his finest dresses and eventually left the city to find a new way to entertain himself. In 39 AD, Caligula decided to play conqueror in faraway lands. And I really mean play conqueror. Aside from being a kid in his father's war camps, Caligula had no war experience. It's when he personally led legions to the frontier, Caligula had his own men dress up as the enemy in the camp so he could play to defeat them. Except he was the only one playing soldier and they really died. <laughs> On his campaign, Caligula himself never saw any real battle. And when he took 200,000 men to Britannia, to Britain, to be the first Roman emperor to conquer it, he had his army cross the sea and then collect seashells at the British shores, told them that they had now successfully conquered the sea, and sailed his 200,000 men back to Rome with seashells. Well, you don't have to mention that. That was fun. And it's fun to him, it's funny to us, but these were of course real soldiers dying for his games. Real money was wasted to move 200,000 men across the sea for a practical joke. So when he got back to Rome in 41 AD, no one was in the mood for his jokes anymore. And there is no big conspiracy or intriguing build up to some suspenseful climax that is Caligula's death. Everybody just wanted him dead. There was no reason to even conspire. Death came quickly, just four years after he became the new emperor. His closest advisors, 
led by his own private guard, killed Caligula. I did warn you not to trust me. On January 24th, in 41 AD, 28-year-old Caligula was found dead with 30 stab wounds. And later that day, his wife and her baby girl were also found dead. Then, to erase all memory of his cursed reign, all of Caligula's statues were torn down and his name was scrubbed from records and every monument. And that's how quickly the mighty can fall. But the irony is that the boy born into darkness would have truly faded into nothing if it wasn't for the fact that the darkness had molded his mind into one so twisted that no matter how many statues you tear down or how many records you erase his name from, the name Caligula will forever be tied to evil and humanity will forever have an odd fascination with evil. And so, 2000 years later, Caligula is one of the most well-known emperors and at the same time the one emperor that was so hated by those who wrote the history books that we really don't know if we can trust our sources in this case. But whatever the case, I'm certain that underneath all the allegations, all the exaggerations, Caligula did die a monster. But I hope I was able to show you that he was not born that way.